The title of this climate change video is 4C. That's 4 degrees C. I'm Dr. Peter Carter of British Columbia in Canada. And I'm going to take you on a tour of this amazing map, which was put out in 2009 by the UK Met Office. And as you see here, it's the impact of a global temperature rise of 4 degrees C or 7 degrees Fahrenheit. This 4 degrees C world map with regional impacts was developed by the UK Met Office and it was shown to the public by the UK Science Museum uh, showing the impacts of a 4 C temperature rise. And it says here you'll notice that 2009 was the crucial Copenhagen uh, climate conference. This is from The Guardian, a new map of the world that details the likely effects of a failure to cut carbon emissions has been developed by Met Office scientists and that was put out in uh, October of 2009. The reason why the UK Met Office uh, developed this map and the impacts, uh, particularly uh, in the year of the Copenhagen Climate Conference, was that a group of leading climate experts published a paper that said that 4 degrees C world on the emissions scenario that the world was on could happen by 2060, and that we were in fact committing ourselves to a 4 degrees C world if there was not a strong binding new United Nations climate agreement, and of course there wasn't one. This was published in The Guardian in September of 2009. The Met Office warns of catastrophic global warming in our lifetimes. And I'm making this video in 2012, so the last meeting was in Durban, and we still don't have any agreement. We're going to be taking a look at a 4 degree C world, and we had better really take a look at it because uh, we're committed to, right now to more than a four degree C world. This is the Climate Interactive's climate scoreboard and what they do is they keep record on top of what the negotiations under the UN Climate Convention have us committed to by 2100. And right now after the Durban failure, the combined national policy proposals that have been uh, submitted to the United Nations altogether commit us to a 4.5 degrees C, 8.1 degrees Fahrenheit, global temperature increase by 2100. So here we are with the Met Office's map, the impact of a global temperature increase of 4 degrees C. This is the website of the map, the interactive map, the high definition map, and this is the only place where you'll find it. It's in the National Archive. So there's the website for you. So the idea of the map is uh, all of these uh, circles, these various circles, represent different impacts that occur at a global average temperature of 4 degrees C and where they occur. So um, you can go to the website and do that interactive uh, learning. I'm going to dwell briefly on the far north and Arctic, in particular in Siberia. This is all Siberia here. Here's Europe, here's Norway. This is the Arctic island of Svalbard here. This uh, coastal region into the ocean here is the uh, largest continental shelf in the world. It's called the East Siberian Arctic Shelf. I'm going to mention that as well in a minute. Looking at the land masses, mid-latitude land masses of 5, 6, and 7 degrees, at a 4 degree C uh, average global warming. But the, uh, the Arctic is warming uh, 13, 14, 15, and 16 degrees C. So four times as fast as the uh, average and three times as fast as the rest of the land masses. And uh, that's a catastrophic situation for the uh, planet and for uh, food in the entire world because uh, this is where most of the carbon on the planet is stored. And until very recently, it was so stored safely away in a frozen state, but uh, that's not the situation anymore because already the Arctic is emitting uh, additional methane into the atmosphere as methane carbon feedback as a feedback response to the rapid Arctic warming. Now this region here which is a 7 degrees C increase this is a vast region of Siberian wetlands. Uh, Siberia is unimaginably huge thousands and thousands of miles and already the methane emissions of these wetlands has increased considerably. Here, where it's even, uh, where there's an even greater global temperature increase, is where the permafrost is. And 
the permafrost and the wetlands here contain twice as much carbon in the most of it is potentially as methane, uh, twice as much carbon as in the entire, all the atmosphere. So we have this huge, what people are called a carbon uh, methane bomb here. Then we have the uh, ultimate planet destroyer, potentially, which is methane hydrate. Methane hydrate is frozen solid methane gas on and underneath the ocean floor. And there's a lot of it up in the Arctic. And in the Arctic, because it can be cold and stable, but a lot nearer the surface, it's particularly vulnerable to global warming. And in this East Siberian Arctic shelf, there's already uh, methane coming up and actually coming up through the water and into the atmosphere. And off Svalbard here, uh, scientists have found methane coming from even deeper in the ocean, methane hydrates, uh, definitely methane hydrates, and they are, they are getting to practically the ocean surface. So it's just a matter of time before the methane from these releases into the atmosphere. And uh, so if we want to uh, be concerned and look after the planet, we have to be extremely concerned about the Arctic region. We're going to focus on the one most important impact, which of course is food. You may want to refer back to this map from time to time as we're looking at the UK Met Office map on regional temperature increases with particular consideration of food effects. This is a crop intensity map from NASA. Here's the equator. So the first thing to notice, of course, is that all of the top food producing regions of the world are in the Northern Hemisphere. United States, of course, uh, less, lesser extent Canada, uh, Europe, UK here, India, and of course, China. Uh, so we'll take a look at what kind of temperature increases we have at a global average temperature increase of four degrees C. So at four degrees C, if you look here, which is Russia and over to Siberia, you'll see that this is a temperature increase of eight degrees C. And that's no great surprise because the last climate assessment, climate change assessment done by the National Research Council said that in general, the land temperature increase is double the global average temperature increase. And that's because of this, because of the ocean. Because the ocean uh, takes a lot more heat in but because it's so vast, it doesn't heat up as much. And so it has a relative cooling, lowering the temperature increase um, of the global average. So there is a two degrees C and three degrees C. This is a four degrees C world. And so you see in the middle of the land masses, we've got temperatures of eight degrees C or double. When we go up to the Arctic, you'll see that there's a 15 and 16 degrees C here because the Arctic heats faster than anywhere else. In the lower hemisphere, because there's relatively less land and relatively more ocean, the temperature increases on the land are not quite as much as in the northern hemisphere. So you see here in the middle of the African continent, we've got five degrees C, whereas in the middle of uh, Europe and Asia, we've got seven degrees C. So the southern hemisphere does not warm as fast as the northern hemisphere. Here's North America and the United States. Now this is particularly important in Canada. Americans have been given the impression that global warming and climate change isn't going to hurt them. And uh, this is absolutely completely wrong because you see in the middle of the United States here a seven degree C increase at this committed global temperature increase of four degrees C. So I'm going to just press the crops tab here. These uh, green circles, huge regions of the world, are going to be suffering a reduction in their food productivity, their food production at a four degree C world, as you'll see. China, India, South Africa, a lot of South America, and all of the United States. That's something which particularly the Americans are not aware of. And in general, the world has not been made aware of this. These are going to be uh, irreversible reductions in agricultural yield because we can't put back the clock on global warming and climate change. In actual fact, we're always behind the clock. There's always more heat coming in the system uh, than has been manifested at a particular time. We'll press the agriculture tab now. Current assessments are mainly limited to alterations in mean climate, but extreme weather or gla and glacial retreat would potentially accelerate declines in productivity further. 
got to explain what this means because it's most important. It means that the models that the agricultural losses are projected on omit a very large number of the most important adverse effects. Agricultural yields are expected to decrease for all major cereal crops in all major regions of production once the global average temperature increases beyond 3 degrees C. Now, people are just not aware of this. That's going to lead to more than uh, a lot more people um, affected by hunger. A lot of people are going to die. A lot. Numbers which we have never seen before. So with the 3 degree C uh, limit in mind, after which all crops in all regions are declining, and uh, for half of the world the crops have been declining for a long, long, long time, because in the most vulnerable regions, billions of people, they suffer reductions in crop yields according to the IPCC for small, quote, small temperature increases between 1 and 2 degrees C. And we're going to start by uh, looking at the North American continent. And of course, the United States is the, and Canada, to a lesser extent, has been referred to as the breadbasket of the world. In actual fact, China is producing more, more wheat than anybody else right now. And the other great food producing, uh, traditional food producing region of the world is Europe. So we're looking at America. You're probably aware that this is where the prairie agriculture is right here. It's south of the Great Lakes, which unfortunately aren't shown on this map here, and then to the west of the Great Lakes, and then goes up here into Canada. I've now pressed the uh, crop tab to show the regions that are suffering declining crops at 4 degrees C, and you see it's all the United States. And these uh, 7 degrees C increases in the best food producing regions are literally off the uh, off the charts. The climate crop model results given in the IPCC, they do not go higher than 5 degrees. So this is literally off the charts. So this is more than double the temperature increase at which the yields of these crops here uh, will have been decreasing. This little bit of text uh, from the National Research Council's food chapter of their 2010 climate stabilization targets explains why I say that uh, at a 4 degree C world, the regional temperature increases are double the tolerance of the crops. For C3 crops, there's two kinds of crops, C3 and C4. For C3 crops, rice, wheat, soybeans, fine grains and legumes, the negative effects of warming are often balanced by positive CO2 effects, that's carbon dioxide fertilization effect, up to 2 to 3 degrees C local warming in temperate regions, which is the US after which negative warming effects predominate. So after 3 degrees C of local temperature increases from pre-industrial, because this is what the NRC uses, uh, inevitably the crop yields are going to decline. And this corresponds to roughly a 1.25 to 2 degrees C in global average temperature. And we're looking at 4 degrees C here, and this is where we're headed right now. But for other crops, the C4 crops, maize, sugarcane, millet, and sorghum, it's even worse. Even modest amounts of warming below this are detrimental to major growing regions given their the small response to the carbon dioxide effect. This goes right up into Canada. So Canada's affected uh, the same. It also goes up into California. The California great um, producing region of vegetables and fruits and nuts. And that's 7 degrees C and uh, this is 6 degrees C. So 6 degrees C which is all the rest of the United States, is uh, double the temperature increase at which the crops will have been declining. So you can imagine how much they will have declined by the time uh, the temperature increases double. If we uh, continue on down into Mexico, um, because Mexico is a great food producing region, uh, 6 degrees C as well. So we'll now uh, continue on with the Northern Hemisphere because here's Europe, which is the other great top food producing region in the world. Europe's going to be uh, hit extremely badly in its uh, crop yields because uh, this is all 5 degrees C here and this is all 6 degrees C and 6 degrees C over here. Eastern Europe in particular has been a very good uh, food producing region, high uh, crop outputs and uh, Russia of course. And you remember already today at a global temperature increase at 0.8 degrees C that um, we had those unprecedented uh, forest fires and drought in Russia, which resulted in, I, I think, um, a 25, 30% drop in the Russian uh, wheat productivity um, because of that heat wave. Three degrees C, the crops will be declining. 
So at 5 and 6 degrees C, Europe food productivity is going to be uh, considerably, considerably reduced. Carry on into the northern hemisphere in China here. And China isn't um, heated up quite as much as the United States, but this um, area here, which is one of China's best food producing regions, is 6 degrees C. So still double that 3 degrees C when the crops are declining. And the rest is all 5 degrees C. So um, uh, China is in a bad, bad state as well for its food production. India is the next um, in best food producing region uh, in the world on, on that list and all of India is affected by a 5 degrees C increase so that's way above 3 degrees C as well. If we go to the southern hemisphere there is of course the Amazon as we know has been cleared over the past many decades and been transformed for, for food production, largely food production for uh, livestock and this region is, is um, going to be uh, hit extremely badly because that's 6 degrees C and all the rest here is 5 degrees C here. In this region here, South America, Argentina, etc., there is fairly good food production. Uh, they're at 4 degrees C, so um, they're going to be losing a significant amount of food. Africa, of course, is going to be hit terribly because their, um, their food production uh, is not as efficient as the rest of the world. There's a lot of land degradation as well. So these temperature increases of 6, 7, and 5 degrees C in Africa are going to be uh, devastating. South Africa is, is the best of the food producing regions in Africa, but they're going to be hit. Uh, they're going to be devastated as well because they have 7 degrees C and 6 degrees C. Uh, temperature increases. I'll leave you with this uh, website address of the Met Office, UK Met Office Interactive 4C World Map so that you can go over it in more detail yourself and look at all these other impacts at 4 degrees C and uh, hopefully you pass on this information to anybody and everybody you can because we really are in a dire emergency. We're, we're committed to uh, a 4 degrees C world and above by our negligent, incompetent leaders.